Yeah. 27 to 20 is the final. Michigan is the 2024 Rose Bowl champions. They win the semifinal uh, matchup. Uh, uh, Don't uh, the natty. Yeah. Sam Lab, you have the floor. Man, it's been a long time coming. They said it was the signs. <laughs> How about now, Josh? How about now? All those people, you know, I was just doing a hit on CBS, and they said, is this validation? Did the team see it as validation? You don't need to validate what you already know. What this does is confirm to everyone else what Michigan has been saying is true. Absolutely. And that's they didn't need signs to beat East Carolina, UNLV, Indiana, Nebraska. These are the teams. This is how ridiculous that whole conversation is. That's coming up at the press conference that is being asked in the postgame. What does this mean as far as the signs are concerned? It means exactly what Michigan has been saying all along, that they didn't need signs to beat these teams, just like they didn't need signs to beat this team tonight. A really well-coached, talented Alabama team that plays physical football, has athletes at every level. But what we saw tonight was what it means to play complementary football. And what is what is complementary football, Josh? I mean, a lot of people say, you know, it's, it's all faith. To me, complementary football is whatever you need to do to win. Some nights it might be going for 300 yards. Other nights it might be getting five sacks in the first half. But whatever you need to do, it's kind of like Michigan's concept of balance. J.J. was talking about this. He said people think balance is 50-50. For us, balance means what do we have to do to win this game? It might be 70-30 one game or 30-70 the next game. And the same thing tonight. This was a game where coming out in the first half, you could see the rust offensively. J.J. McCarthy nearly throwing that pick. Maj with the, with the, with the muff. Mm -hmm. You know, and then in the third quarter, so Michigan finds their bearings because the defense was unrelenting. And I want to let you ask questions. I don't want to filibuster here. But the defense gave the offense a chance to get on kilter. And they disallowed Alabama the chance to get on kilter in the first half. And credit to Alabama, they came out in the second half yeah, and really, I, I, I really am stuck a, it to them. We're going to talk about that because I talked to Braden McGregor post game. Obviously, he set, set the tone for this Michigan defense opening, that opening possession with a sack of uh, Jalen Milrow just to start things off for this Michigan defense. And he says this team was hearing all the critics. Nobody was talking about this no-name defense, he says. But he said, we're the best defense in the country. And they came out with something to prove. And you saw saw that today, that Michigan, the five sacks in the first half, set the tone for this thing bright and early. Yeah, man, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, everyone was talking about Alabama's defense and Alabama's pass rush. And how is Michigan going to block them? Whose offense was the one getting sacked all over the place all year long? That wasn't Michigan's offense. Yep. It was Alabama's yep. offense. And that's what came home to roost tonight, that they couldn't protect the quarterback. And Michigan, again, give the coaching staff credit. Nick Saban, maybe the greatest to ever do it. Got our coach today. Got our coach today. Because they couldn't find a way to get their passing game going. It, it ultimately was their undoing down the stretch. Yep. Now, they found some things in the run game. But think about how Alabama beats people. You think everyone talks about Jalen Miller running all over the place. In Georgia, if you watch the tape, we're, they were deathly afraid of that. We talked about it all week. Vance Bedford, shout out to Vance. I know you're watching Vance. He was like, man, why are you not being aggressive? Now, Vance is blitzing people from the parking lot. Right. So, so maybe not do that, but don't be so passive where you're like, we're going to spy him or we're going to double spy him e even all the time. Allow him to sit back in the pocket and get comfortable. Michigan never allowed that to happen. They came after him from the jump. And it started out with the edge guys and the movement up front. They were running right by him. And then you start adding the linebackers in the mix. And I think what kind of surprised Alabama is how much man Michigan played. They were so aggressive up front. They played man behind him. And he didn't have time to try to get those shots down the football field. And he eventually got to the point where they weren't even doing seven-step drops. They weren't even dropping back trying to go down the field. They were trying to get it out of his hands quick and run the football. Meanwhile, J.J. was able to get on track. He was able to find some accuracy. Those cro those crossers were open all so, game. So let's talk about that. Obviously, in the first half, Michigan falls behind seven off the, off the, off the muff punt. Bama takes some momentum early with that big run. Then Michigan's defense sort of locks down that first for the rest of the half. And then Michigan is able to get a couple crossing routes for some scores. And I think the, especially that second touchdown, the Tyler Morris, where he just took it to the house. Yeah. I mean, J.J. just was able to methodically just find his places, and he didn't rush himself tonight. Yes. That's the difference. You just nailed it, Josh. See, 
this is the Bama recipe. This is why they were one of the most explosive teams in the country because they were getting all those shot yep. plays. And so if you're Michigan, you aren't as afraid of him running the football. He's going to make some plays. He's an outstanding player. But can they do that consistently where they're doing eight, nine play drives, right, without making mistakes? And we saw it. They came out the gate in the second half. Give them credit. They found they found some things to exploit with, with Michigan getting to the perimeter in the run game. Poor run fits. Michigan twisting and stunting up front. Poor rush lane integrity. They were giving up the edge the whole game. And then they just start getting blocked at that point. And so they were able to do that, but they run it on the football field. And then they have a couple of snaps that they dribble back. And all of a sudden it throws them off. So they nullified that drive. And so Michigan, the plan is, can they do that? Can they do the eight to 10 play drives? And they were able to get things going with the run game in the second half. They got it rolling, but not enough to sustain it and not enough to put Michigan away. Meanwhile, Michigan, again, it got sloppy. The sloppiness yeah, that we so, saw in the first half returned in the second I, half. And I think the, and where that sloppiness comes in, and I know we were both tweeting about it during the game, the special teams tonight was probably the, the, the one part of the team that really didn't perform to their usual aspects for Michigan. You had them up on the bot snap on, on the on the extra point. where And every time you see an extra point, you're always like, that's going to come back and haunt them later. Yeah. Almost did. The missed extra uh, three uh, field goal there in the fourth quarter. You were just just kept, and then even the punt return at the end of the game. It was almost like Michigan just couldn't get over the hump for special teams, and so we're able to sort of they still weathered the storm, but the mistakes were there. Yeah, so I, it's not just special teams. You think about Michigan's two drives in the in the third quarter were nullified by poor execution. Third down, the, the Morgan just yeah. threw his arms. Well, well, that was the third third down yeah. that they that they messed up. The first third down was the high pass. Yeah. To, the high pass to Tyler over the middle where he has to reach up and get it. Yeah. And he gets seven yards instead of nine because he has to stop. The second one was, I think that was the drop by, by Samaj, I think was, yeah. was the second one. And then the third play, the third issue that they had was you go out and you got the, the, the muff on the flea flicker and then you miss the field goal. So sloppy, sloppy, sloppy. That allowed Alabama to seize momentum. And now now you got to come back. And then Alabama tried to run the clock down. But then it gets to that point. Michigan's down seven. It's 20 to 13. I don't know, about five minutes left in the game. And now you're saying, hey, this is on our quarterback. This is the reason they brought J.J. McCarthy to Michigan is for moments like this. And uh, what he was able to do, I, I remember I was tweeting about it was a legendary moment. Talk about what you saw from the maturation of J.J. McCarthy because we've seen him grow yeah, from, yeah. Oh, since his high school days and now. So for that moment, to have that moment and to execute that. Hey, moment. listen, clutch. Re the team is resilient because we get back to complimentary football. It's not – you got to give them a chance to be special. You got to – Quentin Johnson make a make a strip, you yeah. know, on a, on a tackle. You know, Mason Graham come up with a big stick. Uh, you know, you're, you're getting these – Braden McGregor coming up with a big – with a big sack to force a, a field goal is 52, but they, they kick the field goal that keeps them from yeah, touching it in the yeah. end zone and, and keep them alive. Right. Giving the offense a chance in the final five minutes, 25 minutes, they were sloppy as hell, but the five minute winning time, it's not how you start. It's how Touch you time. finish. Right. And so they go right down the field at the end of the game mistake after they go right down the field at the end of the game to get the touchdown mistake with the muff punt almost cost them again. almost to cost them again but resiliency you get in overtime so, and we, we we've talked this whole time love jj big time resiliency give the man credit i thought the player of the game was blake corn so let's get to that overtime 2020 tie ball game fresh slate michigan gets the ball first and i almost look at it it's like you want you mentioned blake corn he sets the tone right away with an eight-yard run. And then I think he has one of the legendary runs in Michigan football history where he just refused to go down, and he just wasn't going to let an Alabama defender take him down until he hit the until he hit Pater. Oh, my God. I mean, the dude, first of all, he was running the whole game. So we'll talk a little bit about, about the, the offensive staff and, the great, and the, the great job that the coaching staff did. But he was getting tough yards the whole game, four and five yards a pop the whole game, right? Mm -hmm. But you get in overtime – and this is, to me, the difference that people keep – when you get in a game like this, it's mostly equal. You need the dudes, the guys, to step up and be the difference, whether it's J.J. or, in this case, Blake. They had him dead to rights a couple of times. Jalen Monroe did it a couple of times, too, where they, they got him dead to rights, and he breaks a tackle and makes a play, 
Well, Blake did it at winning time, though. The big run, the first big run he had, and then a big run for the touchdown. Guys had their arms around him a couple of times. He goes through those tackles to get a touchdown. And then you come to the other side, yeah. Mason Graham. Mason Graham was limping around this field the whole second well, let's, half. Let's set that up. Obviously, it's four, I think it was, I believe it was fourth and goal from the four-yard line. Two back-to-back -back timeouts. Both teams call timeout. I think everybody who at least knows football knew that Jalen Milrow was going to run that ball. I don't think he was going to take that <laughs> ball out of his hands. And the fact that Michigan took it and stopped it. I mean, what kind of statement was that? And 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 take take me through your thought process of watching that play. The whole game leads to that moment. Yeah. You made them one-dimensional. Yes. Their success in the second half was all running the football. Right. They weren't throwing it. It was all running the football. Right. So it's very predictable what they're going to try to do in that moment. Uh, you need, what, three yards? Of course they're going to. Yeah. If they got to win the game, you're Nick Saban. What are you going to roll the dice on? You're going to roll the dice on Jalen Milrow throwing the football or running the football? Of course he's going to yeah. run the football. I, yeah, I thought maybe it, at most they might throw it out to the flat, but he didn't hit anything all day. And let's talk about, you know, again, Blake, I thought if there's an individual yeah. player, I go with him. Some people saying defense needs to get the game ball. I, I could go for that, too. But the coaching staff, I'll coach him. What got the offense rolling? We talked all week about shifts, motion, pre-snap movement, throwing off their keys. It led to confusion. The first touchdown, they didn't know. Blake walked into the end zone. You know why? The pre-snap motion. Threw him off. The eye discipline was all work. The crossers were coming open the whole game. It got it opened up the run game. Yes, it shifts, did. motion. Yep. Guys, you cannot just line up against a team like that and say, come get us. You got to move them around, make them think. You aren't tricking them. You're making them think. You're making them pause. You're making them not be instinctive. And then defensively, again, make them one-dimensional. If they're going to beat us, he's going to have to be Mike Vick out there running the football. <laughs> and he's a good runner, but he hasn't been Mike Vick, and he couldn't beat him that way. If you let him get comfortable throwing the football, he's going to do what he did to Georgia. They never let him get comfortable. Great job of, of game planning by this coaching staff. They outcoached the Crimson Tide. They outcoached Nick Saban today. And as far as emotions go, I asked multiple players just in the post game. They said, by far, number one emotional game they've ever played in. And it's, I'm sure everybody watching this has to feel the well, same. So here's what they would say. I'll say what they won't say. How many asses do we have to bust until you call us ass busters? They bust every. They bust Penn State's ass. They bust Ohio State's ass. They bust Nick Saban's ass tonight. Stop talking about these signs. It's a bunch of garbage. It's a bunch of people who have gotten their heads drilled trying to justify why they've been, been getting their heads busted. You know why? Because you got head busters over here. This is the best Michigan team that I've witnessed since 1997. Now, they have a chance to be the best Michigan team we've ever seen. Uh, when, you, when you look at how it, they can win in different ways, Josh, this was not Michigan's A game tonight. They played probably B plus B. This was not their A game. I, I thought B, they'd have to B play an A minus, minus, but they didn't even and do they, that. And they came out and still beat yeah. Alabama. Took it to Alabama in winning time. They're not used to this. Alabama, if it's at the end of the game, who's going to make the winning plays? That's been Nick Saban his entire career. Not tonight. This was a different beast that he went against tonight. Didn't see anything like it in the SEC, the almighty SEC. Michigan punked the SEC tonight. And Michigan is your 2024 Rose Bowl champions. Sam and I will see you in Houston. See next you week. in Houston, baby. See you in Houston, baby. Party in Houston. Let's go. Van said we're partying, so we're throwing a party. Be on the lookout <laughs> for us. Hey, and we're also going to have a special edition of uh, Steady Dropping Dimes. We're going to do a Tuesday morning quarterback or Wednesday morning quarterback. Devin wants to come online. Everybody wants to come on live. So be on the lookout for us all week long on the MichiganInsider.com. We got a lot more coming. Hell yeah, baby. Go blue. We're going to see you in Houston.